Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, thank you for joining us for, uh, for for today's webinar. It may not be afternoon where you are, maybe morning, maybe evening, uh, depending on the, on where you are in the world. I know for at least one of our uh, participants uh, today, it is basically midnight. So uh, I'm going to thank you, thank him for staying up so late when we get there. Um, I want to start off today's webinar, uh, which I've been invited to do by the Star 3D team, to break down a little bit in as short a time as I can. I'm going to compress this down into five minutes or so. The state of 3D for fashion, where you know where 3D and fashion really stands on their progress towards digital product creation at a whole industry level. You may have already seen. Uh, so I'm for anybody who doesn't know, I'm Ben. I'm the editor in chief of the Interline. We published our digital product creation report very recently, last week, uh, which was a it's a 210 page plus breakdown of uh, where digital product creation, 3D workflows really stand for fashion for the fashion industry. It's got a bunch of editorials. It's got profiles of 20 plus different technology vendors, uh, executive interviews, market analysis, uh, Style 3D prominently featured in there as well. So I'd encourage you to go and check that out if uh, if you find value in this initial introduction. Um, but the quickest way I can summarize it, and the quickest way I can say, well, how far is fashion actually come in 3D is to take a step back and to make it clear that for anybody who's standing on the sidelines a bit, maybe you've Maybe you started a 3D strategy and it's not got terribly far. Maybe you are um, you're kind of looking to scale something. You're looking you have an initiative that's in the pilot form. You want to take it somewhat something further. It's easy to feel as though there is it's finished. It's easy to feel as though digital product creation 3D is a complete workflow, a complete ecosystem you just need to buy into. And that's not the case. If you're not really kind of, if you feel like you're not mature enough in this area, it's something you've not done, don't feel as though you've been completely left behind. The future is not finished. Now, don't get me wrong, 3D has delivered a ton of value for brands, retailers, producers in replacing physical samples. But even in that area, it's far from being universally adopted. And the transition from 3D working, so pattern making linked to 3D simulation, uh, the transition from that to wholesale digital product creation, where you're designing products digitally, you're making use of those digital assets in as many cases as possible, that transition is not done yet. There's, there's still a lot of work to take place there. That's a whole industry transformation that's taking place. There's also, as we've proven, there's no one solution for everything. No single brand has everything all figured out. So if you're watching any part of this, whether it's my presentation, the things that come afterwards, and you're thinking, well, we're not there yet. We haven't been able to do this yet. Uh, and it feels like everybody else has. That's not the case. There is still plenty of opportunity to really to get started or to scale the way that you're working with digital product creation and digital assets. Now, one thing I do want to underline, though, is that this is by no means an immature sector when it comes to technology and service providers. It's by no means kind of a little offshoot of fashion technology. We assessed the market for 3D, for digital product creation for fashion, um, and we found that it, for software licensing alone, it's worth around 40 million US dollars per year. It doesn't quite put it on even pegging with something like PLM or ERP, but it is not very far behind. So for, if you're looking at the whole enterprise technology landscape and you're thinking is digital product creation and 3D a small part of it, the answer is no, it's, it, it's a big, it's a significant, it's a thriving technology ecosystem in its own right. It's 3D tools and workflows are used globally. Um, there's a huge amount of integration and interoperability between the different players, which is kind of unique to 3D and digital product creation. If you have any experience with ERP, 3D, supply chain management, you'll know that people like to keep things guarded, vendors like to keep things proprietary. There's a lot of lock-in and things that take place. That's not the case with 3D. There's a lot of integration between digital material providers, 3D simulation engines, uh, product configurators. It's it, There's a whole technology ecosystem made up of multiple vendors that you can tap into if you want to create digital assets and make use of them throughout your value chain. And you can find vendors who do that. There's there's pioneers, there's disruptors, there's expanders. It's a it's a whole thing. It's a whole place that is, you know, it's it's out there ready to be tapped into. Uh, and obviously one of those vendors is Style 3D, which is uh and they they've invited me here to, to give this introduction and they're going to give you more detail on how their particular solutions support all of this as we go on. Now the one thing I would say is that the fashion industry has kind of stalled a little bit when it comes to translating pilots and initial experiments and, um, you know, kind of narrower applications of 3D 
into broader digital product creation. Um, and those, those pilots have tended to be focused in design and development. Now the challenge the industry is facing is how do you take those, which might only be for one division, they might only be for one product category, they might only be with a small number of seats or users, how do you expand that enterprise wide? Uh, and that's where things have got stuck for a lot of brands. Uh, they're uncertain about where to take that. It doesn't matter whether those isolated pilots delivered value, whether they met their objectives or whether they didn't. And when they didn't, sometimes it's a complex mix of technology and culture. There's a lot of reasons that 3D implementations can stall, but at a whole industry level, that's kind of the transitional period that the industry is in. Now the pandemic changed that equation a bit and it's 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 pouring fuel on the fire that's driving people towards wanting to go beyond sample replacement and core design and development and take that into wholesale digital product creation. But the industry's still trying to figure out how to get that up to speed. But one of the potential pitfalls, and it's one that people will have encountered this year, is a tendency and a temptation to run before you can walk. Because we've all seen a lot about metaverse business opportunities. We've all wondered how quickly you can monetize digital assets to capitalize on digital fashion. Um, but the temptation there is to run very quickly towards use cases for digital assets without building the prerequisite parts that allow you to create those and extend the value of those downstream. Because there's a lot of complexity around creating products in 3D. You, you want to need to get your materials in place. You need to get your patterns in place. You need to find the right blend of in-house and external talent. You need to communicate with your supply chain partners. Um, so it's tempting to say, I see a huge amount of potential in digital fashion. I want to go here. I want to do what other brands are doing and sell NFTs. I want to get into video games. That approach is less likely to lead to success than it is if you start to build with the right foundations, if you get the basics of 3D and digital product creation right and then grow from there, which is the theme that we're going to be tackling today. Uh, as I mentioned, Style3D have invited me here. They're present in our digital product creation report. Then they have a lot of different solutions that all contribute towards the idea of a whole digital asset chain, a whole digital value chain, incorporating 3D assets and putting them at the core of the way that you work. Somebody asked, I saw there about uh, sharing a copy of the digital product creation report. Uh, if you head to the interline, just, just Google the interline, uh, it, it, it's front and center there, or I'm sure the Style3D team will be happy to uh, to pop a link to it in there as well. And I'd encourage you to read our conversation with Eric, who's a founder and CEO at Style3D, to get an idea of how they are responding to that need for digital assets and how they're building out that technology ecosystem. So that is a very quick and very fast talking overview of a, of a complicated uh, subject. But what we're gonna do now is go a bit further. We're gonna start to say, well, what does it mean to get the basics right? What is it, how do you unlock success in 3D? Um, and then um, we're gonna get an expert perspective on what an actual 3D and digital product creation journey looked like when it's put into practice. What were some of the challenges? What were some of the opportunities? And at the end, we'll have an opportunity for an open Q&A. Um, but first I'm gonna hand over to uh, Liz Brandwood from Style3D and she's gonna talk about unlocking success. Now, Liz worked in product development for more than a decade. She's worked for brands like Nike, Umbro, Firetrap, as well as Lee and Fung. Uh, she then spent about 10 years working in digital technology. She's had a focus on 3D, working for companies like Lectra, Optitex, and now Style3D. And she's worked on something like 40 different 3D projects and more than 150 technology implementations for household names like ASOS, Marks & Spencer, Tesco, and Ralph Lauren. So she's going to spend a bit of time showcasing Style3D now. Then we'll we're going to come back for the expert perspective and I will introduce uh, Gilles uh, from Style3D when we, when we get there as well. Liz, over to you. Great. Thanks, Ben, and uh, thanks for everyone uh, for joining us today. I will just share my screen. Okay. So what I really want to get across today is how to adopt successfully 3D uh, throughout the value chain and what that success actually looks like. So I'm going to start with some fundamentals and the, you know, where to start when you want to look at 3D transformation. So ultimately, 3D needs to be part of the business strategy. You really need the buy-in from the management teams to, you know, support that from a um, from a budget commit side of things and also a commitment point of view. But also understand the goals and objectives that you're trying to get from 3D and where that really plays into it and making sure that you track that value across those objectives. So if we look at some of the, the foundational benefits, let's say, for 3D, 
it's understanding internally where you can really get that digital asset to replace that physical to really help get that design closer to market. So if you look at some of the, the projects that I've worked on in the past, it's really getting that right time sample first and really helping the teams to, to be able to communicate better in a digital world. But as now 3D evolves and the visuals have improved and obviously the, the communication and um, visibility side of it has, has been enhanced, we look more for the, the upstream benefits that can uh, apply to a business. So having that immersive brand story, so looking at the NFT side of things, uh, more towards the metaverse, using 3D to drive additional revenue channels across social media platforms and really getting that consumer engagement in, in a more interactive way. But ultimately, it's about um, improving the profitability and, and driving different revenues through uh, brand uh, reputation. So if we really look at the, the foundations and, and the things you really need to think about before you implement a 3D project, it's, it's looking at really the people, you know, who's going to use the software, what does it mean to them, and the education side of it, and the different uh, touch points that they actually um, review or make decisions on that digital asset. So it's making sure that these fundamentals are really put in place. Then it's looking at the process. So understanding where those digital uh, assets or the digital garments are actually going to replace some of those physical garments and what's what you do in digital today versus what you do manually and trying to understand what that workflow and the timelines to implement that digital process is is looking like so it's really important to really get the people and the process side of it um correct at the start to make sure that the value is seen across across the business and then you've really got to look at the, the IT, systems in, IT systems that are in place to make sure that the, the software that you implement is interoperable with some of those legacy systems. But also then looking at the future, you know, if you're moving towards the metaverse to make sure that they can connect in an interoperable way and that data can be exchanged accurately and, and visually. Then if we look at the, the foundation side of things, what creates that, that digital product, what makes the asset look you know, as, as real as it can be, it's making sure that you get those assets right at the start. So understanding who has those assets, is it the, the, the brand or is it the, the supplier? Where can you access those assets and how can you build those asset libraries to make sure that everything that's applied to that, that digital garment is as accurate to the, to the real physical garment as possible? And then it's understanding where to start with those those products. Now, it can be, you know, those who are new to 3D, understanding where, where they start, but also those who have already implemented 3D in the past and now looking for the next generation of 3D solutions and what they can then bring to, to the business. And understanding how they can easily store and share all those is critically important to making sure that everyone involved in that value chain who's going to use the digital assets is fully understanding of, of where they are and how they're going to be used. So if we look at the, the digital product journey touch points, we have uh, the digital assets. So we have to look at the manufacturers and the mills and the suppliers. Are they going to create those digital assets for you? Or is that something that the brand will take ownership of based on replicating that physical asset? And then if we look at the, the digital garments, we have the garment techs who, who need to be able to, to make fit decisions on that digital garment. We have the product developer that needs to, to see it through from the design side all the way through to the approval side, as they would as a physical sample. And also a buyer being able to look at that garment and making sure that they can make real decisions based on how that digital garment looks and feels and be able to make buying decisions without actually seeing a physical sample. And then that the digital garment then is also being used by the merchandiser to be able to make allocation issue um, decisions and being able to see what that will look like in a store before it's actually um, created a sample. And then if we look even more upstream, we're looking more at the e-com side of things. So how you can use that digital asset then in, in a virtual world, whether that's a showroom side of things or catwalks, or again, like Ben said earlier, bring, bringing it into the gaming side of things to really create that social and immersive side of the, the digital garment. So who's involved in that? If you look at the people again, it's the marketing teams, the sales teams, and obviously the consumer being the, being the end goal with, with the digital garment. 
So if we look at the process um, of, of, of where 3D fits into the, the development cycle, ultimately it's the designer and the content creator that starts with, with the creation. But what's really key to, to make a 3D project a success is to make sure that they have a hub to be able to apply all those digital assets and those digital garments when they're created and also have the, the making side or the upstream side being able to, to push those assets or pull those assets from that hub um, to be able to interact and make sure that everything that they, they provide is as close to the physical as possible. And then if you look more the downstream side of things, it's been able to give those brands and retailers the real value added side of the, the 3D where they can then use that into e-com or social channels, you know, cutting down sampling costs, studio costs, marketing costs, and, you know, having to not being able to send a digital sample, for example, to an influencer to wear without actually needing a physical. So I'll just start with this video. That's a great video, right? So the, the real reason today that we're here is to really help you understand how style can 3D can help you succeed in creating beautiful content that really represents your brand to make sure that, you know, visually it's exactly as you want it to look to, to really see the, the added value that the 3D can bring. So our studio solution is the, the foundational piece. So it's the, the software that creates this beautiful content. This is the second generation of 3D. You know, we've made it easy to use, very fast to learn, and very easy to adopt with all the creation tools that are designable or content creation creator needs to really make those beautiful, beautiful um, 3D assets. So we have the, the top of the um, range, we have, sorry, sorry. <laughs> we have different CPU and GPU renders and also different fashion presets to really help you create the background or the look or the lighting that you want to show that, that 3D garment. And we can confidently say that we are the best 3D visual on the market today. So some of the challenges in the past when starting a 3D project is, you know, a lot of the, the designers or the, the, the teams have really struggled to get on board because they've had to build a brand new block library. So one of the things that we can do is really help support that by creating those blocks for you. Um, and if it, the other side of it we have is we have assets as well for actually having libraries of blocks. So you can go in as a content creator and very quickly um, drag and drop those into the studio system and be able to re-edit and recreate the, the styles that you want and be able to create products very quickly and easily. Uh, and then if you look at the fabric side, we've got one of the state-of-the-art scanning machines that really brings to life the fabric. So fabric is, is the foundational part of the actual garment. So the fabric makes the, the realism and take, makes up most of the actual garment. So with our fabric scanner, we, we don't just test the physical, we also have, we test the visual. So what we can do is really make that fabric come to life and be able to make it move and adapt to the way that you want that physical garment to look. And we also have um, collaborations with some of the main uh, fabric partners, such as Substance um, and Swatchbook. And we also have libraries as well, where if you need to find a fabric from, from a, a, a mill that you use, we have over 300 of the, the key, uh, key mills digitized, ready for you to use and drag and drop very quickly into studio. And for the looking more at the sustainability side, we have the QR link, which will mean that you can trace that fabric from the source through to the consumer. So this video just shows the, the, the new generation of, of, of fabric realism that the, the 3D solution can provide. Now I know in the past that the buyers have really struggled to understand the feel of the fabric, but because now the fabric and the, the testing of the fabric is so advanced, it's actually really easy to understand the flow and the feel of the fabric. And as a buyer, being able to make those decisions of, of, of what that physical garment will look like. So then there's also the trim side of it and the artwork side of it, having a whole portal to be able to access the, the other additional components to make that digital garment as accurate as possible. 
So we have collaborations with YKK and SAB. So all the major trim providers we, we can um, are available on our platform for the design of our content creators to be able to download and really uh, bring to life that 3D garment. It's easy to edit or recolor to make sure that you can get exactly the, the color or the, the look that you want. And again, with the artwork side of things, uh, you can easily share and drag and drop and be able to see those artworks come to life into the scale that you want them to look like. Now, avatars, these are really evolved, um, as you can see on the screen. So historically, you know, a lot of people struggle to understand the realism of avatars because they weren't quite there yet. With the advancements of technology, the realism is incredible, as you can see here. It's facial expressions, it's the blinking, for example, is, is really replicating, you know, a physical person and being able to really see that. And then for the internal development side of things, you have multiple libraries now of different poses. So you can really get the morphology of that person or that pose that you really want. Um, and you can also adapt it yourself to, to really uh, create the pose or the look or the position of that avatar to make the collection as accurate to, to how you'd like it. And then we have different accessories as well. So if you want to create a particular look with sunglasses or a hat um, or trainers, then we can provide those very easy for you in our asset library. And we have over 50,000 50, assets for you to choose from. Um, and if you're looking more at the inclusive side, we also have multiple skin tones, multiple body shapes that you can choose to really get that collection or the look that you want to, to bring it to life. So this is the animation. It speaks for itself, really. It's, it's incredible. It's the next level of animation. And this is all available in our, in our studio um, system. So it's, it's user friendly. It's I wouldn't say easy to use, but it's it's easy for you to understand to, to create your own uh, animation and be able to create beautiful imagery like this and be able to create catwalks or, you know, looking more at the metaverse, being able to really create those, the movements that you want from your product. So one of the roadblocks in the past of sometimes uh, people starting to adopt a 3D project is how quickly they can they can onboard now with you know management wanting them to, to to do things very quickly it's you know rather than a, a three to six month uh, um, implementation they want to do things you know very very quickly these days so what we offer is we have a, a content creation service where we can quickly create for you the a, a basic look of a, of a garment for example or all the way up to the to the high level so if you just needed something for an internal approval or to to work within your development teams and we can provide that basic level or if you did want to go and um, sell it on an e-com site then we can also support that high level rendering service for you as well and then within our marketplace we have a libraries of ready-made products so if you just want to go in and drag and drop certain products and create those yourselves very quickly and easily again we have those on our cloud platform and one of the challenges in the past has really been about where to store all these assets or where to store all these digital garments and how we can share those those garments or give access to more the, the upstream, which is the suppliers or more the downstream, the marketing teams, and be able to have one central place for everything and one version of the product truth. So Style 3D, we provide a platform. It's, it's centralized and it's easy for you to search and store all the different assets and the things that you need not only the assets, but the virtual showrooms and all the different trend books, that, which I'll talk about on the next slide and be able to really keep everything in the same place. So it becomes a hub of, of, a, of a digital product creation um, vision, let's say. One other thing that's uh, a, key, a key point of Style 3D software is we have a, a really cool tool which enables you to rework 3D from any vendor. So if you've got suppliers that have got multiple 3D vendor softwares, then you can bring that 3D into our platform and you can actually rework that very easily and apply prints, logos and graphics. Or if you are a brand or a retailer and you're on your second generation of 3D, then again, rather than make those 3D assets dormant, then you can bring them back into style 3D and say, for example, it's a core style you can rework on that and really bring it back to life and reuse that and recycle that digital garment and make it a new style. 
So if we're looking about sharing, how do you share on our platform? Because that's hugely important to, to make sure everyone understands the whole process of, of, of communication and approval. So for more of the design side of, of, of the digital product creation, we have trend books, which are interactive. So you, you can send that PDF or QR code to, to one of your buying team and they can access the through a hotspot, the actual 3D asset and see very easily what that looks like. And it almost makes it a little bit more uh, come to life than what a normal PDF would look like. And you can do the same with the fabrics and actually see the, the movement and what they look like very easily. And this can be communicated via a link or via, via a QR code or just a standing email. But again, it's to try and make everything more interactive and intuitive using that, that digital 3D assets. And then if you look towards the, the collaborate, collaborate side, then we have a, a collaborative platform where you can really bring that 3D and share that with teams and all the different teams can make comments on that. It allows you to then do real-time review sessions. So where you can change those, those garment features with the teams live in a session. So you're not having to waste time going back and forth doing, doing comments. And again, there's traceability because we have approval buttons that you can actually see the, the, the stages of that development of that digital garment through to approval that then leads to production. So if you look at this, it's it's OK, we've, we've got the value from this digital garment. We've, we've seen how visual and how great it looks. Um, we've, we've approved it, we've rendered it, we then want to see where it can, we can then take it to the next level. So we can then bring those collections into a, a visual or uh, virtual showroom or sales showroom and really get a feel of how they're going to be merchandised um, through, throughout the business. And then to take it even further, we then go to the immersive store experience. Again, this is a way to either engage wholesale teams or to engage the consumer on a on a virtual store experience. But it's bringing again those digital assets, the you know the ones that look as real as as, as the physical garment, and being able to to really drive value from the business. So it's not necessarily now just the the development side where three D brings value, but because now the the technology is advanced and. We, you know, at Style 3D, we have everything that a business needs to really transform that whole 3D development cycle through to the consumer. It's about really driving that value and seeing the benefits of, of the 3D. So then I'll start. This is moving then from you've got the physical, you've got the digital, and then this is moving more towards the immersive side of, of where you can see that value for that 3D. that's how you can create an immersive brand story um so thank you i hope i didn't rush that too much um and if you've got any questions i'll be happy to answer those at the end over to you ben thank you for that les that was a that was a great overview and it was fantastic to see that video at the end uh i think you know for, for me for somebody that's been um watching 3d digital product creation evolve the uh, how far we've come from you know very simple from quite utilitarian visualizations of garments through to the way that you did the level of photorealism the level of kind of staging and exposure things you can get now is 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 really impressive 
So uh, I'm gonna spend a little bit of time now talking to somebody who has been instrumental in putting a, a very large 3D uh, digital product creation project into, into practice. So I'm gonna ask a few questions of uh, Gilles Rakatanato Andro, uh, who is mm. he's now the global service head for Style 3D. Uh, I'm sorry if I mangled your surname, Gilles. I did, I, I, I did it's, practice it's very good, very good, started. thank you. <laughs> uh, so he's now the global service head for Style 3D. But before that, he worked for Lean Farm for 14 years. Uh, so he, they, he included a senior role there as VP of Digital Product Development. So I'm going to ask you a few questions and pull on his expertise to get an idea of what a real 3D project looks like put into practice. Where where was the vision? Where were some of the drawbacks? So, Jill, how did when you were at Lean Farm, how did you get started with 3D? What was the vision? Yeah, I think the, the, the project starts really a uh, long time ago, it means 2015, where uh, different people uh, in Limfong start to discover what is 3D and uh, try to have some interest on, on the technology. So I was one of them, uh, very curious, passionate, impressed about uh, what 3D technology uh, can already achieve on that time. Uh, and uh, yeah, I, I work in industry for, for many years and I face a lot of issues uh, on the sampling uh, means back and forth sampling, uh, make a sample uh, several times for, for the designer of uh, working the factory. Uh, and I really wanted to find a solution to, 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 to how to say, to uh, improve uh, the, the sampling process. And, and I started uh, uh, to integrate 3D on, on that working process, uh, means that uh, we have the, the designer as well. Minus change means uh, we propose uh, to the customer uh, a sample in 24 hours. Means, uh, example, if uh, uh, the customer say, "Okay, I want to see uh, this this tie with a, a pocket with uh, another fabric," uh, we have been able to do that uh, uh, in in 24 hours. Uh, it was for sure a, a solution, a backup solution, but not really a, a full solution to have the customer to adopt the solution. So uh, yes, the, the, the company, so uh, uh, everyone try to, to, to explore, to experiment 3D uh, in different way. Uh, I've been uh, lucky to, to work for a division that we, we have a different kind of customer, different product category, uh, and, and we test. We did so many POCs uh, uh, to test with all departments, with different customer from all around the world, Europe, US, and, and we test. We test uh, in different stages. So we test for, for, for PD, uh, means mm -hmm. product development. We test on design part. Uh, we test also on, uh, on different uh, outputs. So uh, we use the 3D for, for packaging. Uh, we test all these kind of, uh, of uh, option that we can, we can do with 3D and, and it was successful. Uh, I can say that it was a good success. And, and companies say that, okay, uh, looks like a, a, a tool that for the future. And, and we combine all the experiments on all the team who started this really on that time and, and live from create a, a division named Digital Product Development. So a center mm -hmm. of excellence who combine uh, all uh, uh, the, the knowledge and, and uh, the acquisition of all uh, experiments we did with clients. Uh, and this 3D uh, team has been included in the digital transformation project of Limfung, which called Creating Supply Chain of the Future. So I, I think it was very good experiment and really lucky mm -hmm. to, to have been done this one seven years ago, which seven years ago, the adopt adoption was very low. Uh, means uh, a lot sure. of people were interested and impressed, but very few wanted to trust the tool uh, and apply this. Uh, yeah, I think yeah, and the, the the trust is is kind of key to the next question I wanted to ask, which was, so you obviously have you have a PD product design and uh, technical development processes that had always run physically, right? They'd always been based on physical samples, physical prototypes. Right. <laughs> what, like how how long did it take to sort of build that trust, and how did you start to integrate three D into those processes that had been physical for so long? That's not really easy because, uh, like you said in the beginning, I think they have no only way to integrate 3D uh, in the in the supply chain. So so adoption was very uh, very not easy uh, because a lot of customer uh, what they want in the beginning to is really see a, a digital twin means they only focus on on the quality uh, of the 3D and not really think about the advantage and, and the benefit mm -hmm. that the 3D can bring uh, in the in the workflow in the process uh, and see how we can uh, benefit completely on, on that new tool. So 
yeah, it demands a lot of effort. Uh, we also demand a lot of uh, change management, change of mindset, mm -hmm. uh, and we were able to to, to give some uh, some guidance to customer. And, and we start much more on the three D design as a service. Means mm -hmm. uh, we minimize the, the disruption because you know if we minimize the the customer to 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 disrupt the, the, the whole process because uh, it's it's already a big thing big. Uh, uh, how to say a lab to to go on 3D uh, and mm -hmm. again we work with really a lot of customers with different demands different approach uh, and yes maybe I can give maybe some example for an equation I think like uh, basic block building I think uh, Elizabeth already mentioned that block building is is, is really a, a key point when you start a 3D right. uh, project uh, and, and, and we we start with this it means a, a lot of customer wanted to start 3D uh, but uh, they they face a lot of issue on, on on people to make properly uh, their three D assets. So what we propose to customers is to build up their their, their block uh, and they can start directly or, or maybe immediately with uh, some light design, or maybe some mm -hmm. small iteration, uh, and eventually uh, propose this block to factory to also start uh, uh, the their three D journey. So. Mm -hmm. It was one of the example I think for me was successful. Uh, same thing, uh, we work on some, uh, how to say, uh, some uh, project with an uh, e com player, which uh, I think uh, a lot of e commerce customers wanted to, to, to start with 3D. Again, uh, like I mentioned in the beginning, uh, it's better to work and not run immediately. So e-commerce sure. for me is yeah. already dangerous, dangerous <laughs> part, but uh, it was quite successful for, for that part, means we, we create 3D sample for, for, for some e-com player. Uh, they mm -hmm. post uh, the image uh, in the website. Uh, they use it, the, the, the life of the, the 3D image in, in that kind of customer only was only two or three days. So the customer just, uh, try to uh, have some indication about the sales. So how many click, how many conversion, yeah. how many how many uh, uh, style will be uh, liked by the, the consumer. And based on that, uh, this customer try to uh, produce some some parts. So quite successful because uh, uh, it was amazing. In ten days, uh, uh, production has been ready. So the the customer used the pattern that we use on three D, uh, and after. Uh, making this sample so that they, they produce directly the, the, the collection. So mm -hmm. again, I, I can explain many cases where we integrate this, but it's not so 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 easy. We, we, I think we made I think, so many. Yeah. yeah. There's there's a lot of different scenarios, but I think one thing you said, uh, you know, the speed of getting people to where you're making decisions based on a 3D asset. In that case, mm -hmm. in the case of e-commerce, it's a buying decision. But there's a lot of there's a lot of design and development choices that have to be made on a, a digital asset. How, in your experience, how long did it take to get to that stage where the design and development teams were able to really trust a virtual sample and make choices, you know, creative and commercial decisions? on that virtual sample? And if you could do anything differently now, how would you speed that up? Uh, I, I would say that, that uh, we, I think my, my team and especially the, the customer trust the, the virtual sample when we start to to test the fabric, means uh, when mm -hmm. we we got the, the hardware to uh, to test the, the physical properties and to scan in high level uh, resolution the fabric, it was, I think the, the time when uh, most of customers trust much more uh, are, are 3D assets. Mm -hmm. uh, I think for, for, for some takeaways, I think, uh, yeah, I have a lot maybe, but I think approval process, I think, is really a, a, a key point uh, because 3D can become maybe a, a, a long way to go. I mean, it it's, it's, uh, can be time consuming if we don't mm -hmm. uh, follow some, some way to uh, uh, approve the sample. Some example, uh, you know, uh, in physical world, we have different steps that we have uh, the approval for 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 the the salesman sample. We have the approval for product development. We have the approval for uh, uh, the fitting part, uh, and we have the approval also for the marketing image. So, so it means that all these things, I think, for me, should be taken in consideration. And and what I would like mm -hmm. to say is uh, uh, today uh, on the approval, uh, we need to to make sure that uh, we stick on some basic rule means. Uh, uh, we have to validate the sample. The choice may be uh, uh, I'm clear. So we have to validate the sample for, for the shape and the details before mm 
uh, making the whole colorways. Uh, if you don't do that, you need to render, we need to simulate again. We, have, we need to add some uh, additional step <clears throat> on, on your 3D process. I'm not sure I'm, I'm really clear on this, but I think no, no, no. Me, I think I think you are, yeah. and I think I think you know, in line of with the target of the, the with the title of this webinar, getting the essential building blocks right. You know, going yeah. to basics is exactly mm -hmm. that, right? Like it, the, sure. and the prime example of not not running before you're able to walk in that in that kind of area. If we if if you were to talk to the let's say there's uh, the brands in the audience now who haven't started with 3D, right? So people who haven't gone down this road yet, if you could give them one piece of advice, what would it be? Uh, firstly, I think uh, foundation. I think uh, you have to start from foundation. Means uh, mm -hmm. uh, same like physical sample. You you need to have all your elements to make properly your 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 three D sample. So foundation could be uh, yeah the fabric, the avatar. Uh, it could be the trims. Uh, could be the the two D pattern. So all these elements must be uh, really uh, taken consideration at early stage. The avatar you need to use your avatar uh, uh, matching with your uh, mannequin. For the fabric, I always suggest to, to use uh, accurate fabric. So you have to test your fabric, you have to scan your fabric to make sure mm -hmm. that you, you have the proper draping uh, and the trims. I think uh, if you want a proper sample, uh, don't use substitute. So better to, to really uh, digitize all your elements in advance. And, and again, like for physical sample, the 2D pattern, if you want consistency, uh, on your 3D project or 3D asset, uh, use your, your 2D block to make sure that you, you have this. And for me, it's again, for me, one thing is the block uh, is one of, for me, advice if someone started. Uh, another advice maybe is um, uh, to, to make sure that you have someone in your structure who is fully uh, uh, concentrate on 3D, fully focus mm -hmm. on 3D. Uh, otherwise, for sure, uh, if you, you so, so you need to have, for me, I, at least that people. It could be one people, could be a small team like a, a 3D lab or a center of excellence like yeah. we have in Linfong. Uh, and, and this 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 guy will will really focus concentrate on, on on all the process. He will build uh, the 3D quality standard. Uh, he will communicate with uh, the 3D supplier to make sure that everything is going smooth. And, and he, he also the the one to train a different era. He will decentralize all the knowledge that he has. To, to make sure that everyone uh, can can really uh, do properly their task in this pretty workflow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that's 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 a really good point, um, and I think it's it's making sure that you look at 3D not as just a little pilot program or as a little yeah. experiment or as something, you know, that's that's very much what we found in our analysis of the market as well, is that it's not just a time, a small offshoot of technology. It's something that somebody needs to concentrate on. It's something that needs to be a focus. My last question before I hand back to the Star 3D team, who I know are going to tackle some quick audience questions. My last question to you, Gio, would be, let's say there's more brands in the audience who are already on the 3D maturity curve, right? They've already, maybe they've already gone down the road of uh, replacing physical samples with virtuals and they're now kind of working their way towards a broader strategy. What advice would you give them to when it comes to scaling that initial uh, experimentation with 3D, that initial uh, trust? Once you get there, what's the next step? Uh, I would say also collaborate Really, your ecosystem, I think, is really the key key point. I, I would suggest means uh, I'm sure that if you already start your 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 three D journey, you already have uh, your 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 quality standard. So uh, mm -hmm. if you have your quality st standard already built, uh, I would suggest really that uh, to partnership with uh, with uh, the fabric mills, with the supplier, with the factory, and to make sure that you bring them uh, on that journey. Means a uh, fabric means digital your fabric. Uh, the factory to really work on your block uh, and, and really have a, a collaborative platform to make sure that you can interact with uh, each other. Uh, for mm -hmm. me, it's really a key uh, to have use a dam to store your information, use a dam for to make sure that all the data is accessible for for everyone. Uh, and again, if everyone have all these data in place, you can for sure have some permission for for, for each of them. But if they have this information. I'm sure that you will have consistency uh, in mm -hmm. your, your workflow. Means uh, everyone will use the same uh, information. Uh, everyone, so your, your, your 3D will be consistent and can start to be scalable. Because today, I think the key for 3D is to scale, to scale 3D. So, so for me, it's really key point for me. Yeah, outsource, collaborate, build uh, an ecosystem 
I think for me could be uh, my advice for, mm -hmm. for I think for, I think that yeah I'd, I'd align I would align with you there I think it's it's very important if you're going to extend the value of digital assets to make sure that they are available and that people contribute to it from across the value chain we had a quick question there I saw somebody asked what what, what do you mean by damn digital asset management um and I think specific sure. to, specific to 3d in this case sure. uh Gilles that's that's all the questions that I had for you um cool. and uh, from from my side thank you for your time I really appreciate it uh thank you to Liz thank as you, well man. I'm I'm going to hand back over to the Style 3D team now. I know uh, I think Danny Reinfeld from uh, from Style 3D is general manager for Europe. He's going to tackle some a uh, couple of audience questions that we we haven't had time to get to just yet. Uh, but from my side, thank you very much, and uh, the Style 3D team will take it from here. Thank you, Great. thank you, thank you, and and Ben, pleasure as always to see you, and thank you to uh, our our wonderful presenters. And of course, thank you to everybody for, for joining us. Um, I've been doing my best to answer questions as they came in on the list, as has, as has Alexandra. Uh, out of uh, respect to the timeline, so I'm only gonna ask you uh, two, Alex. Uh, some of the other questions are more in depth, so we'll, we will reply to every one of them. Uh, we'll probably do those offline. So Alex, you uh, Liz touched on it briefly. Um, and I'd like, it, but there's been questions about moving from a different 3D platform to style 3D. What's what's your uh, what's your feedback on that? You mean uh, how long it takes to move from uh, from another 3D solution to to style 3D? Yeah, that's, that's I think that uh, okay. That depends on how it experiences uh, is the person who is already using another three D uh, solution. But according to my experience, I have seen that it takes from two hours up to two days uh, maximum mm -hmm. to to be adjusted in the new uh, features of uh, of style three D. A, a few hours to a few days. Wow, just two days, not even two. Yeah, yeah. We heard it, the answer straight from uh, one of our top trainers, thank you. Um, and there seems to be more uh, questions go, coming through about digital asset management. So why is that something uh, important? And uh, what can they do? What can people do with all these digital assets that they're creating? Very nice question. Well, our platform uh, can uh, can work as a hub. That means that we can gather 3D assets coming from different softwares, like uh, Claw, like SolidWorks, like Rhino. And I'm talking not only about 3D assets like styles, garments, but also rigid, like uh, a bike or a pair of shoes. All these 3D assets can be gathered in our platform and can be shared to our inner or uh, external operators. Moreover, all these assets are able to modify it in the aesthetic point of view. That means that the user can change colors, can apply materials, can apply even graphics and apply on these graphics specific uh, artwork effects. So it's fully uh, operational and the platform can communicate with any kind of 3D system. Of course, not only style with this uh, style, but other styles as well, other yeah, systems sure. as well. So you can so you can create the digital assets from whatever platform you happen to be using, whatever creation tool, whether it's uh, the apparel one or uh, hard goods, furniture, bikes, as you, you mentioned and then manage them in a central place and then use them to create catalogs and showrooms and all with workflows from within the platform. Yeah, exactly. Using all the functionality of our platform, just like you're doing with the, the native files from, from Style 3D. So all these files are editable. And all of that from a browser. Exactly. Fabulous, fabulous. Okay, well, um, I think at uh, at this point, and being conscious of the time, uh, I think we'll thank everybody again. Thank you, Ben. Thank you, Gilles. Thank you, Liz. Thank you, Alexandra. And most importantly, as I said, thank you to everybody who joined. We appreciate you taking the time. Take care and the happiest and healthiest of holidays to everybody.
Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Goodbye.